Hey everyone. Um, so today I'm going to do a few different exercises and today I'm going to use uh, this dumbbell down here. Um, but if you don't have a dumbbell, you can, you can get a plastic bag and you can fill it up with some water bottles. Um, you know, like a, a, the two litre water bottle is two kilos. Uh, you can fill it up with bags of rice or whatever like that. So even if you don't have a dumbbell, you can just get anything you want. Um, and I've only got one of them anyway. So it's really easy and I'll just show you a few different exercises you can do just when you want to up the weight a little bit or try something a little bit different. Um, and I'm also going to talk about communication, which is something that I've been really working on and learning about recently. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit of talk about those things. So uh, we'll start off with uh, two minutes of burpees because I love burpees. Um, so I'll just turn the timer on and we'll start now. Ready, go. Okay, so I've been learning recently about communication. And I started, um, I started doing this when I started reading, uh, sorry, listening to Blinkist, which is a really good app which gives you book summaries in 15 minutes, uh, generally non-fiction books. I think maybe they've got some fiction books, but actually I don't think they would. That wouldn't make much sense. But um, it's just, um, yes, yeah, so it summarizes in kind of like eight little two minute chunks what the book is about. And a lot of them are about self-help, business, how to do better in life and things like that. And um, there was one book by Malcolm Gladwell, and I've actually, listen to this whole book as well. Um, it's called Talking to Strangers. And there's a lot of different books that are similar that talk about communication. Uh, they talk about the different personality types. Um, they talk about how to communicate with more sensitive people, how to communicate with more direct people, and basically how to be understood by everyone. And obviously, as someone who loves languages, um, I love communication, I'm just not very good at it. I'm not very good, well up until recently, I haven't been very good at expressing exactly what I mean to people. And people get confused by what I say a lot of the time. Um, I often upset people because I say things they don't like, or I say things in a way that they perceive to be wrong, which to me, that seems like their problem, but it's not really because it keep, carries on happening to me. Um, so I'll just do like a few little bits of abs just quickly. Just warm ourselves up a bit. I'm gonna grab my phone. But um, yeah, communication is key and it's something that we're very, very, um, well, in Western countries, especially in the UK, I feel like we're not very good at it. Um, we don't get taught how to express ourselves very well. We don't get taught about the different types of learning styles, the different types of communication styles. Uh, we don't get taught about things like the languages of love, um, how people express their emotions and things like that. So I'm just gonna start off with uh, the languages of love, which is something I think that everybody needs to understand and it was actually my girlfriend that explained this to me explained these languages of love and wrote an article about it um, explaining that you know often people feel um, neglected or unloved or they feel that their partner or their parents don't listen to them or don't pay attention or don't express their love but they do or in most cases they do, it's just we don't know how to interpret their, their, their love. Um, for example, men, and I'm speaking from the UK, but from the places I've been in general, are much less expressive um, and emotive than women are. Men are much less likely to express their true emotions and feelings. Um, they're much less likely to, um, to be um, what's the word I'm looking for? To be kind of, um, do outwardly romantic things and things like that. And 
Um, okay, now we'll just do a minute of plank. And so it's important to understand that these different, these different languages of love. And the first one, and the one that um, is my way of expressing, uh, you know, my, my love for people or my, uh, I don't know what the word is, um, my, yeah, expressing my love is gift giving. So this is a very common way um, and it can be, often be very misinterpreted. So I like to express my love by giving people gifts, by getting them little sentimental items or whatever it may be, because the, what, it makes me feel uncomfortable to tell people how much I appreciate them or to, you know, to, to explain it in words what I want to say. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, and that is something I've been working on, you know, being more, showing more gratitude um, verbally and, um, you know, letting people know that you really appreciate them because it's not hard to do. Uh, we're just not really very used to it. And um, so now what we're going to do with one of these, and if you have a, um, a bag or anything like that, you can hold it however you want. The idea is we're going to lift it up and then push it above our heads like that and come back down. So we'll do eight or 10. You can bend your knees a little bit. Give yourself some momentum like that. Push it up above your head. And come back a little bit. You can get a little bounce in your knees if you want a bit of added support. Um, and so back to the yeah, to the, the gift giving. So I am, um, yeah, I've realized then that, you know, a lot of people misinterpret this. A lot of mis people misinterpret buying gifts as trying to buy their love. Um, and I suppose that in a way it is, but really it's more you showing your appreciation or you demonstrating your love in the way that you know how, which is by buying gifts. And this often comes from our parents or our relatives or whatever we've learned about in our close by society. Um, some countries are much more generous than others. Um, in some countries, it's very normal to give people um, lavish presents. Um, in Ireland, for example, where my father is from, for people's birthdays or christenings or anything like that. They give them huge amounts of money. They give them huge amounts of presents and everything like that. And it's totally normal. And it always seems strange to me. But um, the people aren't so expressive with, with their way of love. And I guess that's their way of showing this. Um, we'll just take a sort of 40 second, 30 second rest here. Um, but the next language of love is words of affirmation. Um, words of affirmation is basically giving people praise, telling them you love them, telling them that they're really good, you know, being really positive and things like that. And I mean, in my experience with the people that I know, this seems to probably be the least common one um, seems to be you know pro probably the easiest one yeah I guess probably the one that people struggle with the most um, okay I'll do another set of this now and I'm not really sure why because it's not hard to tell someone that, that they're great or that what they're doing is amazing people actually seem to feel almost embarrassed when people um, compliment them or they feel embarrassed to talk about their own achievements and say you know like I did a really great thing and I've done amazing at this and kind of give themselves the credit for it it's almost taboo people don't do it oh so I'll just do it this time and yeah I think that this is one that personally I want to work on a lot because um, I feel like I'm not very good by expressing my gratitude when really I am super grateful for all the help and all the nice people that I have around me. So I want to practice that one. Um, 
The next one is access service. So this, um, maybe you have one parent that does this. Um, you know, they, they would express their love by being that person that picks you up every time you need it or, um, or will take you to go and see your favorite things or, you know, dedicate their time to you to, or will, um, you know, do something for you, kind of cook you a meal or, um, you know, something that requires their, their actual involvement and their effort and things like that. So that's always a great one. Um, the next one is um, quality time. So I'm sure that everybody has got a friend who, who does this. Their way of expressing themselves will be by spending quality time with you. They'll be that person that you can call any time of the day and they will give up their time to talk, sit and talk to you. Um, and you know, if, you need, if they need you, you'll be there. Um, I think I'm quite good at this one as well. Um, good when people tell me they need me, then I'm always make sure to be free. Um, but equally, sometimes I get really upset when people let me down or when I expect people to do the same back to me um, or expect them to want to help and things like that. I get a bit upset and I realise that that's wrong because, you know, not everybody has that inside of them where not everybody feels that they have to do those things. Not everybody has those that link, you know, of like, oh, this person needs me. I've got to be there right now for them because maybe they think that, you know, you need someone else more or that they can't help you properly or something like that. So there's a lot of factors that have to be taken into consideration. Um, so we'll do another one of these. But um, quality time, again, is another, another um, really easy way to, to show your love for someone um, and to communicate with them. Um, so like, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to improve your relationship with someone, obviously spend quality time with them. Um, it's obvious when you say it, but sometimes um, people don't know that that's the simple, easy way to better communicate. Um, and the final one was gift giving, act of service, words of affirmation, quality time, and I can't remember the other one. Um, sorry, I just I forgot what the last one is. So the final one is physical touch. Um, we'll just get down again and do a bit of side plank. So physical touch um, is obviously exactly as it sounds. Um, some people are very touchy feely. I am not touchy feely at all. Don't really like it when people touch me. Um, but I'm sure again people will know someone where they are very touchy feely, um, and that's their way of expressing their love by t physical touch. Um, and so you can start to understand that, you know, if someone is touching you a lot, even though maybe sometimes the words that they say might be strange, um, that they do um, probably love you and have some respect for you. And when I say love, I don't necessarily mean in a romantic sense. I can mean as a friend, um, you know, as a lover, as, as whatever. Love can be anything. Um, so obviously with these side planks, you can come up and down and you can do this. It makes it a little bit harder or you can Lower your, is that your hip? I don't know, whatever that part is. Um, I've done a minute on there now. So with these workouts, what I'm, you know, what I'm not trying to do is give you exactly what you need to do to do everything. Um, I'm just wanting to, number one, entertain you with some food for thought for the day. Um, and number two, just to let you know that you know, I make these up. Um, I just, I know different exercises which I've learned from different places. Um, but other than that, I just make them up. Um, and you can too. You know, you can see the types of things that I'm doing and you can do your own little versions. You can make them harder, you can make them easier. Um, 
But I mean, if you're just starting or if you're not that fit yet, everything is hard at first, everything. If you do five or 10 minutes, you'll be dead of hard work. But you know, it's like, it's really simple little things. Like even one of my favorites, as you've probably seen, is um, just simple leg lifts like that. But you can, you can change them in loads of ways. You can make your legs go wide. You can lift them like that. And that will, that's my back fat there. And you can, you know, make them go wide like that. Or you can make them flat, really, really flat. And straight, the straighter they are, the harder it'll be. You know, you can do all types of weird things. You can just move your legs around and sit up. Like anything you do that's engaging your core is all, um, it's all working. Like just made this up now, twisting from side to side. Do that now for a minute and put my legs in and out. And anything you can feel that's working, your core works. And you can make them always make them harder or easier, leaning back, leaning, leaning forwards, do whatever you want to make it harder or easier, better or longer or whatever. You can take little breaks whenever you need to, it doesn't matter. Just as long as your heart rate is always going um, and you're always keeping yourself active. It's actually great for me talking through these because you know it gives me a way to just kind of talk, release stuff that's on my mind, help me to process things, um, and it also makes it much harder because I don't have any time to take my breath. So thank you all for watching and listening and giving me an excuse to do this because. I'm too young to start talking to myself with for no reason, but I wait until I get a bit older and I can become a crazy old man. That's the dream. Um, now, we will do. So for this, you want to get your weight or whatever. Um, and you want to just come back down like that, slowly to the floor. This is doing your abs. It's doing a bit of your triceps. It's really hard. Bring this closer. I'm kind of scared that I'm gonna drop this on my head. Oh, really hope I don't. You can even keep your legs in the air if you wanted. Makes it harder. If I can really feel my entire body is just really taking this. Really difficult. Get that little. Just have a little rest for a bit. Another thing I've learned about communication is that. A lot of people, myself included, struggle to get their ideas across to people. If you have a great idea, people struggle to portray that idea and they give up out of frustration. They might have listened to a podcast or watched a documentary and heard something really cool in it. And then you know the information, you know that you know it, you know that you understand, but when you go and try and repeat that information, you can't do it and you get frustrated. And it's not that you can't do it, it's just that it's hard. It's hard for our brains to hear a load of information and then try and repeat it, formulate it in your head, understand it, organize it, and then tell someone. And obviously the longer you wait, the harder it is. So what I started doing now is when I'm, well I've been, done this most of my life because I never stopped talking, but is when I learn something, I try and tell people straight away. I try and tell my housemates, I try and tell my girlfriend. Sometimes I just randomly message voice notes to people and I tell them what I've just learned. Oh, I take of that. And by, by telling people, it forces your brain to understand it. It forces your brain to organize the information and explain it to someone. Um, quickly. And the moment you've explained that once to someone, 
Um, then the next time that you come to recall it, unless it's, you know, 10 years down the line, it should be fairly easy because you've already explained it. Your brain has already figured it out. It's pieced together A, B, C, D, E, F, and G and put it into one little timeline of, of information, one little uh, beginning to end fact or piece of information. And so you can, you, can, you can solidify all this information in your head by literally reading it, looking at it, copying it, repeating it, and repeating it is the key. It's the same with if you're trying to learn information. It's especially the same if you're trying to learn a language. Um, you're trying to solidify that information in your head. Um, it happened to me when I was learning. Still does sometimes, but I've been doing it for a long time now, so not so much. But it happens to a lot of my friends where we live in Spain. A lot of my friends, they know a lot of Spanish words, but because they don't practice them in sentences, they don't repeat them, um, they don't remember them. And so there's a thing called active and passive vocabulary. And active vocabulary is when you can, um, when you can actually, um, you know the word and you can use it in your vocabulary and it's there, you know it. Um, so any of your regular words you use in your day-to-day -day life, that's your active vocabulary. Oh. Passive vocabulary. It's vocabulary that you know, that you know it, and if you've heard it, then you know it. Um, but you can't use it in your, in your daily um, life because you, uh, it's not part of your vocabulary. You don't use it enough. So it stays there as you know, some of the big words you might know. Uh, if, you, if you heard them in a sentence in context, you'd understand, but otherwise you'd have no clue. Um, so it's really important. It's the exact same with the facts, as I was saying, or the languages, that when you get these information, you tell someone as soon as possible. Um, all right, now, how was I going to do this? So we're going to lift it up in front of us like that. Do any of these. <sighs> Try and keep your arms as straight as possible. It's really hard at this because I can't grip it properly. Fuck. Oh. Oh, this really burns. Really hard trying to get the grip on that. I mean, I suppose I can do it. Yeah, I can do it like that. Can't do it like that next time. <sighs> but yeah, communication is key. And when I was thinking up my, my business model, and when I was trying to speculate about the problems of the world and how to go about solving things, I narrowed it down to the two main problems in the world. One of them being lack of communication, which causes people to be unhappy, arguments, fights, breakups, uh, uh, misunderstandings, lack of love, feeling of rejection, all of these negative emotions, everything, pretty much all, ne all negative things that we feel come from lack of communication, comes from lack of understanding, lack of communication, lack of information. All of those things are lack of communication because the message that we need is not being portrayed to us properly. Because if you get portrayed, if you don't understand something and it's causing you damage, but then someone explains it to you and you understand it, like a therapist, then it makes everything much easier. It makes everything much, much easier to understand. And, um, you know, people don't feel so bad and overwhelmed and, and upset. Um, and so, yeah, all the things that make us feel mentally unhappy is usually lack of communication, almost always lack of communication or lack of understanding. Um, now, the things that make us physically suffer, the thing that makes us physically suffer is usually lack of money. Because if we have lack of money, then we can be hungry, we can be thirsty, we can be living in a dangerous place. We can be, you know, we can not have access to the resources that we need. 
we cannot have access to uh, education, um, we don't get a chance to travel, things like that, all, all the things that make um, our lives more difficult and stressful usually comes from lack of money. So now, lack of money is a bigger problem. Lack of money is something that alone we can't, we can't solve. Hopefully, uh, things will improve after this virus. Um, wealth will be redistributed a bit. Um, I'll talk more about that in other things, but hopefully that will start to get a little bit better, bit by bit. But lack of communication is something that all of us can work on individually. We can ask the people around us, you know, communicating with our parents is gonna be different to communicating with our family, it's gonna be different to be communicating with our friends and with our partners. All of these people have different necessities and they have different ways of, which they would like to be communicated. Um, and it's important that we just ask, we can simply ask people how they would like to be communicated with. You know, some people prefer to be called, some people prefer texts, some people prefer um, big long emails. Um, I'm one of those people, I like a big long email because I show that, it shows that the person has put in the effort to sit there and really take the time to send a big long email um, explaining everything that they want, that they feel, um, and, you know. Okay, sorry about that. So the, the um, camera died, as always. Um, but now we can do, so let me just check I'm doing this right. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, we'll do some squats like this. So holding out to the front and squatting down. Oh. It's really hard. talking about but um communication communication oh. click in the back oh so we'll just do another five exercises five sets and then I think that should be enough for today I think the one good thing about this COVID is that people have been forced to start communicating better. People have been forced to spend more time with their families or their housemates, or, you know, ring up old family, like family members they haven't spoken to for a while. I spoke to my uncle for about, first time in about 10 years. Um, I've spoken to friends, been in contact with friends I haven't spoken to for ages. Um, had loads of great chats with people from around the world, done loads of oh, amazing things. Oh, I think this weight's a bit too heavy for me to do that, but I can't be bothered to change it. But yeah, no, I think that people are gonna be coming out of this virus um, with new skills, new life skills, new motivation. A lot of people have been delving more into spirituality. A lot of people I know anyway. Um, something I'll talk about in other videos. But something's really interesting, I think, nowadays. Spirituality, religion. Um, just everything to do with the mind and what we think and astrology, philosophy. People have had more time to start and sit and think through these questions, which maybe they'd never thought before. People have been forced to, to go through different um, internal problems and stresses and things like that, which maybe they've ignored for ages. 
but they had so much time on their hands that they've been forced to just face up to these. And so I think all in all it's been great. All right, so the closer you hold this, the easier it is. The further out you hold it, the more it's doing your shoulders, your neck, everything like that, much harder. Okay, it's the last one. And yeah, with these exercises, you can, you can do them at your own pace, really. You can kind of just copy what I'm doing or not, or just do anything you want and just listen. I just think, you know, we're used to listening to music and things like that. I just thought it's a little bit different to have someone to talk to you. It's kind of like going to the gym with a friend, you know, the time goes quicker and it's easier because you've got someone there to listen to and to talk to. Um, so that's kind of why I decided to do it. Um, hopefully people enjoy it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is just on each arm, bring it up like this, push it in the air and down on the floor. So it gets the whole body involved. So you can push up with your legs and then use a bit of rhythm. I'm probably not doing very good form, um, but the weight's not too heavy, so it's kind of easy. I always like to kind of try and let it go down slowly there with the bicep. And when you come down, it's always good to be slow. And when you come up, it's always good to be explosive. sidetracked and then ended up starting this really late. Usually I try and eat by about one or two o'clock, but um, yeah, it was all delayed today. Down slowly with the bicep. But I mean, I'd love to hear back from people about if they have any topics that they think or if they agree or disagree with anything I say, I'd like to hear about it. Or we can have a talk or if there's anything that you'd like to know more about, then I can look into it. Like I love, I love researching things. I love finding out things. And now I've found out this thing about communication where that it's better to tell someone the information you learn straight away so that you remember it. Now I really want to be able to find things out and tell people straight away. So it really gives you the incentive to do that. So you can just tell me, I'll try and learn anything. People think this, sometimes people think it's bad to be opinionated but I kind of think it's bad to not have an opinion on anything, but it's easy to form an opinion. It's easy to hear about something, use the information that you know, and then form some sort of idea about it. It's easy. Even if you only know a small bit of information. side and then we are done. Thank <laughs> you. 
really push these last few ones. And again, like it doesn't particularly matter what weight you're doing these with, so long as you're keeping your heart rate up, heart rate up. Oh. So long as you keep your heart rate up and your um, your muscles are getting tired, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you can do two and someone can do 200. It makes absolutely no difference. Like when you first start doing these, these workouts, these high intensity workouts, they're always hard. You'll always be weak. You'll always be able to lift way less than you usually can. It'll always be hard and it'll always be horrible, but as you get more used to it, it becomes easier and easier until you get to the point where you're thinking of how you can make it harder. Because what originally was really hard for you, is now easy. That's when you start playing around with different moves and different body positions and anything you do, you know, like you could, if you wanted, you could pick this up like this and then put it up like that, or you can twist it around like that and put it up like that. You know, they're all working slightly different muscles. So you can, every time, you can just try and do something different that you haven't done before. And oh, this is using the whole body. We're going down, we're getting the legs involved, we're getting the abs then as we come up here. Then we're getting the shoulders and everything, side, the obliques. That's why. Just, oh, final one. Oh. Oh. Now I'm just gonna do a quick little um, stretch, which is oh. just to stretch out the upper back, which for me sometimes gets really stiff. Just kind of take everything out. Oh. Any of you there do yoga, you can do like a little bit of yoga afterwards just to stretch out. I don't really know that much about yoga. I do, well, I used to do it sometimes, but I wouldn't really be able to tell you much of what to do. But maybe I should learn I do know the stretches because I spent my life playing sport, but I hate stretching. But it is very good for you. So it is worthwhile if you can be bothered to do it. There's some press ups just to warm down. This one's called Downwards Dog, I know that. Oh, step forward. So. Um, if you like that, then subscribe. If you've got any comments, make comments. Um, if you have anything you want me to talk about, then let me know. And I can just blab about anything you want. Um, follow me on social media at The Quest for Wisdom. I've got a ton of cool stuff, documentaries, videos, podcasts. Everything is all ready. It's all being developed throughout June. Um, and then I will be hopefully releasing it all at the beginning of July. I'm very excited, it should be great. Um, I'd love to have as much of your, uh, as much of your support as possible. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much.